Hello, I'm Kurt Owen. Today we're going to talk about how to walk in freedom and what it means to be a disciple, to be trained and so that we can truly walk free. And in a tactical tip, we're going to talk, talk about off-body carry bags. To succeed in life, we have to fight. That's why winners train spirit, soul, and body. We have to be ready. Not your typical minister, Kurt Owen left a successful career in private investigation and executive protection for the ministry over 20 years ago. His simple, practical application of God's Word will reveal how much Jesus loves you and give you the ability to fight to win. Now, get ready for a tactical tip from Pastor Kurt. Hello, I'm Kurt Owen. Today I want to talk to you about off-body carry bags on our tactical tip. This is a way to carry a firearm no matter how you're dressed. But the term comes from off-body carry bag is the, bo the weapon is not technically on my body. It's in a bag that I am carrying. The weapon is off my body. And they're designed so that you can carry these weapons. And so like with this one, I've got my, now you can see my magazine's out. It's locked back. This is how I'm carrying this particular firearm off my body, but still with me. Now I can wear this even if I'm going to the beach or something else. There's a lot of advantages to it, uh, but there are also disadvantages. Um, it can be heavy, it can be cumbersome. I feel this a lot more. Now this isn't the, I, it's not only for my firearm. I've got other stuff in here. I've got my wife's Christmas present in there. I've got my wallet in there. Uh, up here I have pens, but off body carry bags, um, this way, no matter what I'm wearing, I could carry this. Now, it doesn't look really great with my preaching suit. Now this one, somebody's gonna ask me which one this is. This is a 5'11", and I don't remember what it is. I like the 5'11 slings because this is so wide, it doesn't dig into my shoulder and things. Um, but an off-body carry bag is a way, and for all you ladies that carry it in your purse, you're carrying an off-body carry. Hello, I'm Kurt Owen. Welcome back to Fight to Win. We've been talking this week about how to be free. In fact, we're releasing this brand new product called How to Be Free. There's, uh, I don't know, maybe 20 hours of teaching on here. Um, I'm going to get done with this this week because I have to move on to another subject. But we want you to have this. This um, We're talking about discipleship because ultimately the only real way to walk in freedom is to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this explains that in a lot more depth than what I'm able to get on here. And so uh, please go to KurtOwen.com and take advantage of that. Now, we started in... Uh, John chapter eight. And where we, what we saw here was, is, is that being a believer is not the same as being a disciple. And that, that might be a starting, startling reality uh, for a lot of you, because uh, a lot of times we like to believe that we are disciples and well, and, and just because we believe. And then a lot of times people believe, have this thought process, well, you know, I'm a believer, I'll be made free. You have to transfer from being a believer to being a disciple. Uh, you, in here, you don't have to believe me, believe what Jesus said. Romans, or excuse me, uh, John 8, 31 says, These, uh, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you, are, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Notice again, because of the love of God, the ultimate goal of the Lord is your freedom, is, is, your, is for you to be free. He's not trying to control you. He's not trying to manipulate you. He wants you to be free. Also, notice that Jesus, the one who brought grace and truth, is saying that there's some effort going to be involved in this process, that you are going to have to learn to abide in his word. Now, again, these people immediately began to argue with him and say, uh, you know, verse 33, then they answered and said, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? There, so now you, you begin to realize that people that are believers 
can be self-deceived, right? And, and the scripture tells us this, right? Because uh, the scripture tells us that if you are a hearer of the word and not a doer, you deceive yourself. Well, that's what's happening here. They're, they're sitting there arguing with the one that has come from the Father, that they believe has come from the Father. They believe that he is exactly who he says he is. And yet once he says, you will be made free, their argument is, is what are you talking about, dude? We're already free. And yet they have Roman soldiers standing on street corners because they are not free. They are in bondage to somebody right now. Right now, they, are, they, they belong to someone else. And yet they can't see it. And see, you're going to have to accept this as a believer. You're going to have to accept that as a believer, I could right now be operating in self-deception. They're arguing. It doesn't match the way they think. It doesn't match their view of the world. And right now, they're refusing to change the way they think and change their view of the world to line up with him because they are just believers. They're not disciples. Disciples, you know, one of the reasons you become a disciple, I don't know if you've thought about this, and maybe I'm going to show you scripture in a second. Here, let's, let's just look at it now. Go with me to Luke chapter 6. In Luke chapter, oh, I'm going the wrong way. Um, Luke chapter 6, and we're going to be about verse 40, okay? And this, is, it's interesting, some things he says here. Um, he said, a disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. Okay, now I want you to think about that. And, and I think in the King James, it says everyone who is perfect. Let me see how it says that in the regular King James. Um, but notice there is a training process that is going on. Notice that there is a part uh, that you're sitting there um, and you're, you're, you're sitting down with the intent to learn something. It says the disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. Let me ask you this. Have you ever thought about the fact that the reason you become a disciple is so that Jesus can teach you how to think? He can teach you how to see the world. He can teach you how to live life. That that's the way you became a disciple. And now you are supposed to enter into training. Well, and the nature of training is, is that you need to learn to do it the way your trainer is teaching you. And the ultimate goal of a mature disciple is to be like the one who taught them. And, and listen, you are never going to be, like it says here, a disciple is not above his teacher. I, I do believe sometimes um, believers believe that they are above Jesus. People say, no, no, I, I, that's not true. That's not true. And I, I think you do. I think you do. Because um, what you, you will walk around in life and you, you know, I, I think it's funny when people talk about that Jesus was tolerant. Uh, well, we preach tolerance. We want to be like Jesus. Jesus was not that tolerant. <laughs> I mean, not if you think about it. I mean, he would look at people and say, you're a whitewashed tomb full of dead men's bones. You are of your father, the devil. Get thee behind me, Satan. Um, you, you, you know, he was not that tolerant. He would, his disciples, my goodness, half the stories are about what is the matter with you? Why is it you have no faith? No, and I think that people today, they, they actually want to be more Christian than Christ. That they want, they're, they're trying to be above their teacher. Well, you know, well, that was that, you know, let's just be like, like I remember uh, driving down the highway one time in PETA, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, had a sign that said, that uh, I want to be a very vegetarian just like Jesus, right? And it had Jesus, the, one of the Catholic pictures, right, where he's smiling. And, but instead of the halo, he had an orange peel behind his head, a slice of orange, right? And it was glowing and stuff. And, and I see that and I'm thinking, 
Jesus was not a vegetarian. <laughs> um, I know for a fact that he ate lamb. I know for a fact that he ate fish. Um, no, he, he wasn't a vegetarian. And so now they're trying to be more Christian than Jesus. They're trying to be above their teacher. He wasn't that at all. And see, you, you, need to, you need to look at Jesus. You need to look at the way he thinks. You need to look at the way he speaks, thinks. You, you need to look at what he values. And then as a disciple, you need to be trained to value those things. Those are your values. You know, um, we have elections here in the United States. And I'm amazed at the way some believers vote. They vote for people that empower things that Jesus will not exist in the millennium. I, I, I've, I've come up with this and I want you to, and, and again, to me, this is not about politics. It's about, I belong to a king. I have, I am a disciple and I serve a master. And I want you to think about this for just a second. Here, here's a good litmus test for the way you should vote. Okay. If a party endorses a multitude of things that will not exist during the millennial reign of Christ, you shouldn't vote to empower those people. Because understand, when this is all over, it is not a democracy. It is a dictatorship. When we get done, when Jesus returns, it is not a democracy. You will lose every right to vote. We will have a king and it says that through us, he will rule with the rod of iron. Okay. If, if you got to ask yourself this question, would, would God, would, is Jesus going to allow abortions during his millennial reign? So I can't do that. I just can't because I am a disciple. I have a master. I have a king. You know, we have to, we've got to get a hold of that on the inside of us to become a disciple because really ultimately that's where freedom comes from. I mean, let me ask you this. Don't you think Jesus was free? You know that he never encountered a problem he didn't have a solution to because he was a disciple of his father. I, I don't know how greater disciple you could be than I don't do anything I don't see him do. I don't say anything. I don't hear him say. That, that is, that, that's where we have to go. But we are being trained. Are you allowing this training to work in your life? Are you participating with this training? Are you yielding? You know, part of training is, is you don't do it that way. You do it this way. You know, when I teach firearms training, a lot of times people come in with the old way and they want to do this. And that's not the best way to shoot. So I need them to do some things like this. I, there's a lot of changes that I need them to make. And, and if they really want to be a disciple of mine, they're going to have to do it the way that I'm teaching them. Now, I want you to see something else here that Jesus points out. Go back to uh, John in verse um, 8. Because he continues on after this, after they say we're not in bondage to anybody. He makes a statement. Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is the slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Now, this, this presents a contrast, Right. Because what he's trying to do is provoke them out of sin, right? And he's telling them, listen, if you choose to continue on in sin, which is the opposite of discipleship, eventually sin is going to kick you to the curb. Eventually sin is going to cast you out. What looks fun, what looks reasonable, eventually it will destroy you. But... If you will yield to me and become my disciple, then you will become a son and you can live forever. That that's what, and, and once I make you free, you are free indeed. Listen, I know that you thinking that you know how to run your life and do everything. I, I understand trusting in yourself, but at, at some point, 
that's probably going to kick you to the curb. Because it's not, you don't, you're not going to abide there forever. But if you would listen to Jesus, you would not be up and down. You would not be tossed to and fro. You would be able to walk on in strength and in freedom. And again, notice the heart of the Lord. And therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. The whole point is for you to be free. You know, this is, um, you know, now, now we can talk about the Great Commission now that we've kind of seen some of these things. In um, Matthew uh, 28, in what is commonly called the Great Commission with the instruction. And in verse 18, it says, uh, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. Now, well, let's go on. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe or to follow through with, to, to know all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I want you to notice several things there. Our master gave us some commands, right? We are not in this walk just loosey-goosey. Whatever goes, goes. There are some commands. The one filled with grace and truth still gave commands. Notice there that he came with both grace and truth, not one or the other. If you have too much grace, you will be given over to the flesh. If you have too much truth, you'll be given over to legalism. You have to walk the middle of both. You have to walk in both grace and truth. Now, again, this great commission is about us going out with the authority of the Lord and making disciples of all nations. And I have to be honest, a lot of times we've just made believers. Now that's the first step because remember, evidently it's the first step before you become a disciple, right? You got to believe. And I'm, I don't want to discount becoming a believer. That's better than not being a believer, right? But we have to burn within our hearts as the body of Christ and as a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have to burn within our hearts to make disciples, we have to burn within our hearts to teach people the things that he has taught us and commanded us. Teaching people that you need to observe all these things. You need to see them and you need to follow through with them. Now, if, if that's true, don't we as a disciple, that's part of being a disciple. So here's the question. Are we observing everything he commanded? Are, are we understanding that he did, in fact, command it? <laughs> uh, I mean, um, because a lot of times I hear people, and again, I'm not doing these things to get God. These are not the works of the law. I'm not doing these things to get God to bless me. I'm not doing these things to get God to love me. I'm doing these things because God has blessed me. I'm doing these things because God does love me. And I am his disciple. But again, I want you to think about the motivations here since Jesus has explained his motivation in us becoming disciples. His motivation in us becoming disciples is freedom. So ultimately, what could we say about the Great Commission here? It, he's, he's asking us to take people to a place of freedom. That's what he desires. That's his will. That's why he wants them to become disciples so that they can walk in freedom. But we, how are you doing with this? I mean, I'll be honest, um, you all are my disciples, right? That's the whole point of these broadcasts. I'm, I'm doing my best to disciple you. When I show up in, in churches, when people invite me to come into churches, my goal is to help the pastor fulfill the vision of that church and to help him in the discipling of the people, right? But our goal needs to be 
that we are going to make disciples and that not only are we going to observe everything He commanded, but we're going to teach other people to observe everything He commanded, but not out of legalism, but out of love, that I want to do this. Um, uh, I bless my wife and I do a lot of things that I don't want to do because it blesses my wife. I'm not doing that to earn her love. I'm doing that because I love her. I'm not doing that to earn her love. I'm doing that because I know she loves me and I like being a blessing to her. I think we might've talked about this before, but musicals, my gosh. I'm gonna need a minute. Um, musicals, oh my goodness, okay. And, and the worst, well, technically operas are musicals on steroids. Okay, so they're just over the top. Okay, and um, the, but I mean, the sound of music. I, I, I mean, honestly, I, I could go the rest of my life and never hear doe a deer, a female deer again. And I, I would die a happy man. I would be so happy. And let me tell you what happened that was worse. I made a comment like this, and please don't send me memes and mails and don't send me DVDs of The Sound of Music because recently I was in one of our churches and I was talking about how I didn't like The Sound of Music. And for the next week or so, people were getting me gifts related to The Sound of Music. Okay? And I'm sure Goodwill enjoyed them. Um, but I don't like musicals. But do you know that I've sat and watched The Sound of Music with my wife? Do you know that I have, without shutting the TV off, I've let her watch it and play it in the background? I'm, golly. Now, why did I do that? Did I do it because I'm legally obligated to? No. Did I do it because she demanded it out of me? No. I did it because I love her. Now, I mean, even on our honeymoon, right? We went to Hawaii. Somebody blessed us with a trip. We went to Hawaii and we went to a luau, which if you don't know what a luau is, that's a Hawaiian musical um, where they do a bunch of dancing and singing and, and, and stuff. Well, I agreed to go. She wanted to go. I agreed to go. Now, I brought a um, video playing device so and headphones so that while the, the Hawaiian musical is going on, the luau, I watched the video. Okay. People say, I can't believe you do that on your honeymoon. Hey, it was the best of both worlds, right? I didn't have to hear all that stuff, and she got to enjoy it. Okay. Um, now, here's the thing. Why did I do that? Was, was I doing it to earn her love? No. She already loves me. She already does. I'm not doing it to earn her love. Am I doing it to prove I love her? Nope. I don't need to prove I love her. I do. Why was I doing it? Because I love her and she loves me and I like blessing her. That's exactly why we should fulfill the Great Commission. Not only have we been commanded but it should come out of our love. Now, if you, if you don't love doing it, um, you know, recently we had Nacular Ministries come in to uh, our churches and um, we, by the way, I strongly endorse them. And they took, um, they took a lot of our people out on the streets uh, to minister to people. We, I think just this weekend, we saw 41 people saved at a, at a local event, 44, 44 people. And, um, the thing of it was, uh, we saw our people come alive and people who thought they could not do this and would not do this were out there seeing people saved. Now, why, though they were uncomfortable, one of the things we do have to get to the fact, and, and, and listen, I know that people, especially Americans, don't like this verbiage, but you have been commanded to do this. You have been commanded to make disciples. 
Not only that, we now for the first step was we got them to be believers, right? And we're very excited about that. But we also provided things so that they could be discipled. We provided the opportunity to, for discipleship the same way Jesus provided the opportunity with discipleship. You know, this is kind of the purpose of the local church is, is that, and pastors, I would encourage you, have a mind towards discipleship that you're actually training your people to be at the very least like you, the very most like Jesus, right? And people say, well, we, I, I don't follow men. Paul said, imitate me as I imitate the Lord. Follow me as I follow Christ. Nothing wrong with that. That's the reason that, listen, I want you to watch everything we put out. I want you to watch all of our videos. I want you to come to our conferences. I want you to read all of our books, all of it. Okay, I want you to listen to all the series even th because we give them to you absolutely free like this one, How, How to Be Free, that you can get by going to KurtOwen.com. I want you to listen to all of it. However, I do want you to go to a local church that teaches these truths as strongly or stronger than what I teach them so that you are being discipled in these things on a regular daily basis so that you are getting stronger and stronger in these things so that you can be free. And your pastor will help you with that. Your pastor will, if, if you're in a good church, will teach you the Word of God and get you encouraged. That as much, I, Again, I want you to listen to everything we put out. I want you in all of our meetings. I want you to watch the show every day. But today's Wednesday. Find a church to go to tonight. Or you got a couple days to find a church to go through Sunday. I want to pray with you about that. Come back. Are you walking in true freedom? Learn to be a disciple of Jesus Christ and walk in freedom by knowing the truth that sets you free in this powerful teaching series from Pastor Kurt Owen. We're offering this series on USB as our free gift to you. Order yours today on our website, KurtOwen.com. The Bible says that the Word of God is like a sword. We want to put this sword into your hands. Uh, have you already gotten this? This is our new series that we're offering this week, How to Be Free. I've only got two more days on this subject, and this has hours on this teaching, and you need this. This will teach you how to become a disciple and how to implement this in your life. Go to KurtOwen.com, and you can get this absolutely free, or you can call the number at the bottom of your screen. Get it today. I want to pray with you about discipleship in a local church. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for both of us that we become better and better disciples to you, not out of religious obligation, but out of love for you, because truly you love us. And Lord, for my brothers and sisters, I ask them, I ask you to reveal to them who their pastor is and to get them a good church in their end. Some of them are saying, well, we don't have a church that teaches like you. Father, I ask you to provide that in their area. And we ask you this in the name of Jesus. Amen. i got more to say about this. See you tomorrow. I'm Kurt Owen. Remember, Jesus is risen. Victory is assured.